It's Amy's Table, a girl's guide to living with Amy Tobin on Q102. Pull up a chair and join us. Susie Middleton is a food writer, editor, and farmer living on Martha's Vineyard. She's the author of four vegetable-centered cookbooks, Fast, Fresh, and Green, The Fresh Green Table, and Fresh from the Farm, all of which were given a top nod from NPR. And her latest book, Simple Green Suppers, a fresh strategy for one-dish vegetarian meals, just released from Roost Books. And Susie's joining me today on Amy's Table to talk about Simple Green Suppers. Welcome back, Susie. I'm so glad to speak with you. Oh, thanks for having me, Amy. I'm, I'm really glad to be here this morning. So, you know, before we get into your latest book, which, by the way, I love and use all Yay. of your other books, you, to tell everybody a little bit about how you landed in Martha's Vineyard and your story before your latest chapter of your life. <laughs> well, I've always been crazy about food and also about writing and editing, so I got into the magazine business. And I talked my way into a job at Fine Cooking Magazine, and 10 years later, I was the editor-in-chief, um, and, you know, because I have a big mouth. <laughs> and I, had, I had a lot of fun doing that, but um, I had kind of a midlife realization that I was out of touch with the source of my food, and I really, really felt the need to get back to um, growing food and just, um, you know, kind of exploring what was going on in the food world, which was starting to explode at that time, so... I took um, a little sabbatical, which wound up being permanent, and came out to Martha's Vineyard um, and off the coast of Massachusetts, and I wrote my first cookbook, and I started stalking farmers, <laughs> and I learned they were really nice, and I, I, I worked with a few of them, and um, then I wound up actually starting a, a small farm um, and having um, about an acre of vegetables and hundreds of chickens and um, um you know, just really getting into um, doing it myself. And then I wrote some more cookbooks. And at any rate, that's that's where I am at this point. And do you farm more than an acre now? No, actually, I farm a little bit less. Oh, actually, that's moved, probably good. I, I moved to a smaller spot. Um, and so I'm concentrating on tomatoes and flowers and green beans, which are kind of my specialty, um, so that I can, you know, make a living <laughs> Yeah, doing other things. So it's a it's a complex situation trying to make a living as a farmer. So well, I'm sure. And as you are an, an author as well, that has got yeah. to they've got to press on each other for sure. Well, I'm yeah. just imagining all the people on Martha's Vineyard stopping by when you had a farm stand, going, yeah. "Wow, how lucky are we?" I bet the whole area ate better once you moved to town. <laughs> well, and I still have a little farm stand, and people, I have my loyal customers are so fabulous. So it's it's really fun. I feel very blessed to be able to do it. Yeah, it's a great it's a great life and they're great books and, and the, the thank inspiration you. that you give through them is wonderful. So thank tell me you. a little bit about Simple Green Suppers. I know you're saying it's really a game plan for putting together dinners. It is. Um, I, I'll tell you, Amy, I became, I crossed over the line into full-time vegetarian eating uh, the summer after we raised three pigs. <laughs> we <laughs> ate pork all all winter long, and I had I was kind of like, oh no, I don't know. And I all my books have been vegetable centered. I love cooked with vegetables because they're so creative. So I decided, you know what? I think um, I'm just going to step over this line and and try to eat um, all vegetarian. And and so then I had the challenge every night of with a busy life of putting together what I call supper. Um, you know, not a really heavy meal, but it's got to be uh, complete protein dinner. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if everything could be one dish served all together and there's a balance of flavors and textures? So little by little, I started to develop a strategy for how to eat veggie suppers every night. Um, and, you know, I began to think of it as you bring your fresh veggies home, whether they're from the grocery store or the garden or, or wherever, and what do you pair them with? Well, if you've got a, a really... Um, well-stocked pantry, and I don't mean hundreds of things, but just some basic categories, and I, I call them um, the nine things I think of, noodles, grains, beans, leaves, toast, tortillas, eggs, and broth. Um, if you bring your veggies home and can pick something from your pantry that you've got, and then also embrace a few make-aheads, you do some things ahead. You cook rice, you cook beans, you make some really flavorful little sauces, which I have a bunch in the book, and then you can sort of make endless combinations between those veggies, those staples, and those flavor boosters. You know, I want to just expand upon your make-ahead part. When I take the time, I too, like you recommend on a Sunday, when I take the time on a Sunday, which is most Sundays, to make-ahead 
at least some element of several meals for the week, I am so much more under control and therefore so much happier, calmer, productive. The list goes on all week by taking oh. that little minute. Aren't you? I mean, yes, Amy, that is, I'm so glad to hear you say that because that's, I, since I've been doing this, it is amazing. I love coming home and just being able to um, pull out my cooked chickpeas and throw them in the saute pan and add some some kale and some lemon and some garlic and, you know, and maybe some toasted almonds that I've already toasted, but being able to look in the refrigerator, even roasting vegetables ahead or, and I found that grains keep really well um, cooked in the refrigerator for about a week. So you don't even have to come home and cook rice. You've already got it cooked. You can make fried rice or you can do a bunch of different things. Um, and it does really make you feel better. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's For not control. just the meal time. It's sort of like it expands over your whole life. Well, I know that you talk about your veggies plus one components, which I think is great in the book, Simple Green Suppers. And you mentioned that there's a way to put together a meal that has all the varying textures and tastes. And I think that is probably the biggest challenge for someone that is not cooking a completely vegetarian um, lifestyle. How do you get all those satisfying textures together when you've when you're really just veggie based well i think you know i'm (laughs) i eat a lot of nuts um i'm big on texture and i think um and i'm always telling people to toast nuts because they get at add texture but i also make a lot of um really small little uh, tiny sauces you know balsamic lime juice and brown sugar Mm. um yogurt cucumbers and dill Mm. um lemon tahini maple syrup and um you know it's a little lemon tahini sauce and i keep those things in the fridge so like those are my flavor boosters um or i've got roasted vegetables i like to give things an extra layer of flavor by browning them people laugh at me because i say i love green vegetables but they always say my favorite color is brown i love caramelizing (laughs) (laughs) to give flavor um so i try to pair you know and i i point out in the book umami type of vegetables mushrooms and eggplants um greens are have actually have a lot of protein in them so you want to be sure you're using some of those things and then pair them with your um you know nice noodles any kind of pasta grains beans i love chickpeas and i do a lot with showing people how to do um, a variety of things with them in the book um tortillas eggs things that you know, just add interest and make mm-hmm. give you a lot of variety. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned adding things with umami, and of course, mushrooms are so satisfying and, and can really, I think, satisfy even the most ardent carnivore. But what other foods do you think for somebody who's saying, you know what, I'm going to try this, I'm going to put a foot in? What are some of the most satisfying directions for meat eaters to go when when embracing the simple green suppers? Well, you know, one ingredient I've really um, embraced, which I hadn't really embraced before, is miso. Um, and that I, I have a crystallized ginger miso dressing that I put mm. on a, um avocado and um, orange and radicchio and chickpea salad. And it just, you know, miso is, it, it's not that hard to start using it. I um, use about a tablespoon of it for a cup of water, or you can put a little bit in a dressing. I've got a spring soup that has asparagus and peas and um, a little bit of tofu. I, I don't eat a lot of tofu. Um, I really do eat a lot of chickpeas and beans and hearty grains like wheat berries and brown rice. I've mm-hmm. got a, a great method for cooking um, most of those hearty greens just by boiling them in a lot of water like pasta, very, very easy. You cook them until they're done and then drain them and keep them in the fridge. Um, so those kinds of really hearty ingredients add a lot. I love miso. I love tamari. Um, other vegetables that, you know, add some real depth are sweet potatoes, which mm. are, you know, good for you. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I use hot sauces, vinegars, you know, a, good pantry, but doesn't have to have hundreds of ingredients in it. It just has some great flavors. Yeah. Oh, I cannot wait to try some of these recipes. I mean, I, uh, you always provide such inspiration by the recipes themselves, such great insights by how they're written. And uh, I love yeah. this. Thank you for joining us on Amy's Table today. Again, you've got to pick up Susie's latest book, Simple Green Suppers. And if you don't already have 
Her other books, Fast, Fresh, and Green, the Fresh, excuse me, I can't say this, The Fresh and Green Table, Fresh from the Farm. Check them out because they're all really terrific books. And Susie, where can we send people for more information on you? Uh, my website is sixburnersue.com. Perfect. S-I-X-B-U-R-N-E-R-S-U-E. <laughs> Perfect. And I'll put a link to that on amy-tobin.com as well. Susie Middleton, thank you so much for joining us on Amy's Table. Thank you, Amy, and you guys have a great day. You too. Thanks for listening to Amy's Table, a girl's guide to living with Amy Tobin on Q102. For more, visit Amy's blog with Q102 online at WKRQ.com. Winning comes in all shapes and sizes. It's different for everyone. One thing is certain, every day there's an opportunity for a win. Just like scratchers from the Virginia Lottery. Every day grab and go. Every day giftable. Every day fun. It's where anticipation meets instant gratification. Like the new Virginia Lottery Scratcher High Roller Blackjack, with a chance to win up to ten times your prize. Now, that's an everyday win. Drive to a retailer near you. Odds of winning any prize, 1 in 4.16. Cox can help make your home smarter and your life easier. Now you can use your Contour voice remote to connect to your home life cameras so you can view them right on your TV screen using simple voice commands. That makes it easy to keep tabs on what's happening around your home right from your couch. Need to keep an eye on the kids when they're playing outside? Just say, show me my backyard camera into your Cox voice remote and watch them while you're in the house. And if you're waiting for a delivery and want to make sure it's there on time, no problem. Just say, show me driveway camera to check on it with your Home Life HD cameras on the TV screen while you go about your day. When you live in a home powered by Cox Internet, you can stay connected to what matters and let Cox take care of the rest. To learn more about all the benefits of your connected home, visit cox.com slash thisishome today.